I dropped this opinion piece about the news that, you know, Sean Gares, he basically retired from, from doing commentary. And I wrote this opinion piece called Richard Lewis. Because <laughs> that, that's not what they do at DeSoto. They want to make it absolutely clear it's a Richard Lewis opinion piece. They always make sure this is in. If you ever wonder why an opinion piece doesn't get out in timely fashion, every publication I work for has a Richard Lewis rule where they read my shit thoroughly but look, the views expressed in this opinion piece are those of the author do not <laughs> richard lewis is a known hater of riot games and <laughs> the writing in this was poor by my standards i think if you want to see an example of my good writing you go and read the opinion piece i did about like etica you go and do the piece i've done about like cyberbullying and, and and mob mentality on twitter these are good pieces of writing where i took my time i'm about to drop a piece of writing i think it's going to be actual good writing talking about simple speech and katavita i'm really being meticulous over the language i'm using this was blasted out in pure anger because one of the things you'll find is sometimes the fuel is anger. It has to be anger. Uh, it's very hard to sit for six hours hunched over a keyboard, jabbing at keys to get something out for that day in a timely fashion without something fueling you. In fact, I'll, I'll let you into a secret. I actually struggle to complete an article in a single sitting these days. Very hard to do. What tends to happen is if I'm if I can't get the muse, I'll pour a drink, and then the drink will help get the drums going and then i start get my steampunk typewriter out this is all punky he comes out we work together me the liquor and the clack of the keys and eventually we get to a point where i've done about 800 words and then the source takes over and then i can't i run out of steam and then i have to come back and then i come back and i don't write in linear order and i, I don't recommend any writers ever do do this uh for anyone that's interested never start at the beginning and end at the end never do that it's a jigsaw write your paragraphs write your points think about how they fit together lay them on the paper look at them and then create it connecting you know like connective tissue on the pieces it's like a dialectic you know like you get to hear a equals da -da 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 yeah so that's how i do it it's very hard to start at the beginning and end at the end and do like what this was like three thousand words in a single sitting for me but i was so fucking irate at what happened because first of all sean is a great guy and a personal friend obviously yes Th this article is more biased than the most biased opinion piece i could write on that basis sean is a legend in cs i would respect and love him dearly for that alone but i've had the pleasure to get to know with him i worked with him on his first broadcasts i've seen how hard he works behind the scenes i've seen the respect he has for his craft anything he tries his hand to i know his lovely family and I wish this guy all the success in the world and all the happiness in the world because he's one of the few people I've met in esports who utterly deserves it. There's not a mean-spirited bone in his body. He's just an example, right? And how often in esports do you say that? Not often enough. So, I love this man. When he went and said he was going to do Riot Games esports, I told him, I said, just be careful, brother know what you're getting into because you have a home here sean could be on a, a top tier broadcast desk analyzing cs tomorrow even after the time now two years or whatever it's been you know out of the game he said listen i'm gonna go over there i'm gonna work incredibly hard i want to be a commentator more than an analyst now because i think there's a gap we don't have detailed high-level color commentators anymore, uh, especially in fast-paced games, because it's very hard to play the game at a high level, understand the game at a high level, and find the gaps in a broadcast to explain the high-level things quickly, succinctly, efficiently. And he said, I'm going to nail that because this game deserves it. And there should be someone like that. And then he paired up with DDK. We're going to come to him in a moment too. And so he went away. And in the early days of Valorant casting, I saw loads of casters phone it in. I saw loads of commentators fucking phone it in. You know what I'm talking about. They were CS casters, some of them, or, you know, they came from other games. And basically, they didn't know the name of a special ability or an ultimate. And they were going, oh, he's blinded him. Oh, he's flashed by him. They would slip up and call the operator the AWP and things like this. And they didn't care. They, they wanted to give you hype, but not substance. 
And there's something to be said for that. But I believe if you're going to come into a game, you must respect the game. I wouldn't commentate Dota and fucking say, like, oh, Blitz cranked that. Oh, sorry. You know, I wouldn't. It, it's it's jarring. It's offensive. You know, you, you owe the fans, you owe the community, at the very least, to get the language precise. That's the starting point. A lot of commentators didn't do that. And, you know, I'm sure they will over time. It was a bit of a free-for-all at the start. But, you know, the co it's no coincidence, by the way, the commentators who are now considered at the top of the field are the ones that did do this and understand this. He did all of that. He, he did content. He did analysis. He worked on condensing the depth of analysis into bite-sized information and then worked with a partner to fit it in. And he worked meticulously at this. I cannot explain to you how outrageously skilled he is he excelled even my expectations as soon as he moved away from an analyst i went man casting's a different ball game he's not gonna like it i was wrong I'm not like say as we prove with league of legends i'm not always right but the one thing i was right about is i said if at any point you push back against riot's bullshit and if at any point you disagree with them you're gonna have a bad time and he said well i think if i do enough work and if i'm good enough and obviously here we are so i wrote a whole article right because they basically said he wasn't going to go to masters wasn't going to go to essentially the big event coming up and they couldn't even explain why it was just you know, they just weren't hiring him now obviously and i put this in the article despite people pretending i didn't i don't believe anyone's entitled to be hired of course you're not you're a freelancer if a company doesn't want you, they don't want you. They're not even obliged to give you a fucking reason for it. It can be unfair. It can be bullshit. But they absolutely don't have to hire you at all. Sean didn't realize that he had a number of black marks against him. Because uh, because Riot's black marks are absurd. <laughs> you, you wouldn't assume they were. One is speculative. The rest I know. The first thing is he missed an event for the birth of his child. Now listen... You're going to say, Richard, you're just such a riot hater. Riot, th these are not normal folk. And I guarantee that him choosing family over an event was viewed negatively by them, even, even under those circumstances. Because I can actually find you psychos in eSport, I'm one of them, <laughs> who have worked events because they were terrified of never getting hired again during times they just shouldn't have been on air i've talked in the past my best friend fucking hung himself and then I, but it was like a week before cologne the major and i went and worked the major and i was sat there getting wrecked because they'd hired me as an analyst and everyone's going he doesn't know what he's talking about you should kill yourself richard i had to deal with all of that while i was like trying to process the suicide of my best friend and i shouldn't have done that that was like absolutely self-destructive and i know i know guys who have missed <laughs> events like the birth of a child to do fucking esports events i've known players <laughs> just play through got to right so yeah some operators in the space want total fealty now let's assume i'm wrong about that that's just my assumption based on the fact i will not give riot any leeway whatsoever because i as i did in this article know all of their sins this was not even an exhaustive list not by a long shot they don't care about ecosystems they don't care about esports except as much as they can control it and it exclusively benefits them the second thing that he had against his name sean guess he's good and he's popular and that works at the beginning. One thing I didn't put in the article, because it was speculative, and as I said earlier, I don't like to throw in wild speculation, but it's an opinion piece, so speculation is appropriate, is have you noticed how eventually the people that are being phased out were big names from other games that came in, brought their fan base, brought their eyeballs, and now suddenly a surplus to requirements? How very interesting. Something to consider. Yes, Riot Games obviously milked a bunch of you. And they might continue to do so. Think about that. Being good and being popular shouldn't be a black mark in an eSport. But it is if you get to a position where you can then influence what Riot have to do. And a lot of the roots they have in this is going back to LCS. They learnt this hard lesson. Joe Miller and D-Man. Legendary duo that they couldn't do without. People forget this part of deep D-Man lore. They think it's all football manager and let's get this bread, PUBG, and the Incredible Hulk theme tune. D-Man was a top-tier talent. Uh, absolutely one of the greatest casters to come through uh, the esports space.
but there was a time when he was co doing commentary on League of Legends, but wasn't getting sort of paid a full time salary to do it. And he made a tweet, which then blew up on Reddit, if memory serves me correctly. And he said, I'm not making enough money doing this. So I'll probably have to quit unless something changes. And so the community pressured Riot to essentially hire him and pay him because nobody wanted to see Joe and D-Man break up. Joe had intimated if D-Man went, he wouldn't stick around. What did Riot do back then? It was essential for the future of the eSport that they kept their one of their premier duos. So they had to give D-Man the bag. And the bag was acquired. And the rest is history. They never want that to happen again. Ever. Also, you might remember, I think it was at... Uh, VC, I can't remember which one it was, but it might have been the Champions, or was it Masters? Anyway, they ha Sean did go to an event, and they used him as an analyst. All that work he spent being a colour fucking commentator, being a, you know, honing that craft, and they stick him on the analysis desk. Now, he has to say yes. He took the job, and he worked as an analyst. They broke up the DDK and, and Sean duo. Why? Because you don't want a popular duo. That's two people that can leverage you. Two minds in alignment. Are better than one after that my understanding is sean did, said L like we are a commentary duo i want to do commentary please hire me as a commentator another black mark uh -uh. we hire you and you say yes if you ever say no or ever tell us we're making the wrong hire fuck you get out that's how they do it that's how riot be so now riot is a company that gives you one strike any pushback is treasonous so he's already he doesn't know it yet but Sean's on the outs, I'll tell you, from, from past experience. This is a company. I left this out. Remember, I've told you this story many times. This is a company, like, after me and D-Man had our fucking spat, which was all predicated on the fact that, you know, I broke uh, the news that they were going, that they were leaving Riot, uh, Joe and, and D-Man, and were going to go to ESL. And internally, Riot Games said, Richard Lewis cannot be the one to break our news. So they gave me, they said, we will give you a statement in two hours, and then rushed the story out. So just to deny me the scoop. And that was what they put. They literally sent that email and circulated it. So anyway, because of that, they, they told the Intel Extreme Masters who were going to hire me for a StarCraft event, I couldn't work at Intel Extreme Masters hosting a StarCraft event because League of Legends were there and they didn't want me adjacent to their product. So Riot stopped me working an event for Blizzard, <laughs> hired by ESL, because I'd written stories about them they didn't like. That's who they are. So Sean's on the out. He's pushing back. He says, obviously, as well, the other thing that was going on behind the scenes, and I didn't put this in the article, they don't want exclusive duos. You can't be exclusive. Now, listen, I've been one in the past. I've said I don't like duos for this purpose, uh, and I think you should be flexible. But CSGO is CSGO, and Valorant is Valorant, and despite 70% of CSGO's DNA in Valorant, the casting is completely different. And you have to understand that. Um, and as a result... I think with all the details and everything that's going on and the more opportunities for mistakes and errors and fuck-ups and missing things and the preciseness of having to be able to occupy the space in a correct way as you commentate, duos are infinitely better. They're infinitely better. That rapport, that understanding, that natural fluidity. And guess what? That only comes with time. That only comes with reps. That only comes with being hired. And it only comes with not being broken apart. And so they made this point. Another black mark. How dare you? And on and on and on it goes. Sean didn't get hired. Couldn't understand why. Asked for feedback why. Didn't get any. And so now he said, well, fuck it. I'll go be a coach. By the way, we'll walk into a top coaching job in NA. Has had multiple offers. We'll walk into one and we'll make way more money than he ever would as a commentator under Riot Games' his system. So I obviously, here I am doing all the, the complete history, you know, wrecking Trindamere, all of this. And what was great about putting out this opinion piece was not only was it done in defense of a friend and sort of, you know, calling out riot games is just terrible handling of things it was also giving the valorant zoomers a, a fucking real history lesson a real history lesson about what riot are and why they will always be like this and why you should temper your expectations for what a broadcast looks like right now they're more interested in the co-streaming stuff it's actually 
you pay, you pay less for more eyeballs with the co-stream deals they're doing with the talent agencies. Problem is, it won't always be like that. They're about to find out the hard way that if they become reliant on co-streaming, then the big influencers will bend them over. Uh, but, you know, whatever. So anyway, I put this out. Blew all the Zoomers' minds. It's an opinion piece. Also, by the way, just someone draw me with a massive chiseled chin. Because, uh, you know, I even insult my readership as I'm making them read my articles. I am a Chad uh, in that sense. Let me just show you some of the digs I threw in at the Zoomers, right? The consensus among the fans on social media was that this was a big L. Their way of expressing that the broadcast would be diminished, right? Now, unironically, when I went to the thread on the day Sean Gares announced his retirement, literally people were going, another big L from Riot. They were literally saying that. Another big L from Riot. Big L. All Riot takes his L's these days. That's what they were saying. Another detail, of course, by the way, is Sean said he would have worked the event for free. That's also how you know. It's just uh, fuckery. And then here you go. I also add, I'll elaborate, but since there's so many of you have a short attention span, I'll front load. So there you go. Zoom, I've insulted their attention span. I've insulted their age. I don't care. I ratioed them by making them read my article. It was kind of weird because uh, the response to this was just bizarre. There were a lot of 10-year-old Reddit accounts uh, from League of Legends that just uh, came out. Like, look, uh, you, the top comments were, like, all allegations of, like, me brigading it. I don't think they realize, like, I've got a pretty substantial following for an esports writer. And Sean Gares has a pretty substantial following as an esports personality. And the fact that we're do talking about Valorant, but also it's two CSGO personalities talking about it. I don't think they realize this made it blow it up. The only place I saw it linked, by the way, was in, like, the Summoning Insight Discord. I didn't link it. And I only found that out after the moderators said so. But you got a ton of awards for whoever uh, put it up there. And look, holy shit, 32 awards. Uh, I don't even know if that's good or not. I don't, I said, don't follow Reddit because it's garbage. I bring this up because this is the most awarded post I've ever seen. And so fast. And also, it's 60 awards now. This guy, the, the, the extra, completely normal and natural stuff. No brigading of any kind. No way. Especially coming from Richard Lewis. He would never. Where did I, where did I, where did I brigade? They spent ages uh, talking about this. That it must be brigaded. Oh, by the way, as if I've got more influence in that regard than Riot Games or anyone else as a negative party. But yeah, man, fucking weird. So everyone was popping off about that, but the message did get across. In general, the article was upvoted. It was seen. It was well received. There was a few idiot Zoomers complaining about like, you know, his opinion, it's biased. This was a weird post. This guy... And he got awards, which obviously I must have brigaded as well. Um, he did a fact, he said, I'm going to fact check this. I'm going to fact check this opinion piece, right? He went through and fact checked it and uh, said, because I didn't specify the year light joined, that was wrong. But then the rest of it, he's going, this one is basically correct. Many in this context is two champions. He's not done his research. It was actually more. It came out later. His own source here said Odie asked Riot. Yes, Odie, who was in the original LCS talks, go look at Evil Geniuses management, go look at Sir Scoots, go look at Slasher, go look at Too Good, overlooks all of that, but then agrees that, yes, I'm right anyway. And basically went through and said, I conclude most of this is, not, is correct. That was the fact check. And everyone was like, thank you so much for doing this. Capable of doing my own fact checks, homie. Uh, do 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 appreciate you agreeing with me though. What a fucking what a turbo nerd that cunt is, eh? So, anyway, that article's popping off, and of course, it also because I'm a prescient motherfucker. And what annoyed me about it not going out, getting out sooner was I said DDK will probably retire now, right? And lo and behold, it happened. You know the the problem with this, and so I want to give people a little bit of context about this. It's with a heavy heart that I announce I'm hanging up the mic. Uh, casting will always be an integral part of who I am. For now, I'm stepping away. I'll close out on the current playoffs of VCT and game changes. Learning I wouldn't be a part of the first VCT land this year was a big factor and something I've known for a while. 
After months of talks, Riot and I were unable to reach an agreement to allow both parties to work together in partnership. To the fans, thank you for helping me to realise my dream of casting video games. You are the ones that make it all worth it. I hope you will be stoked for my next steps and continue to support my esports endeavours. Please reserve ill will towards Riot and respect that I want to go out with positivity. As you can imagine, stepping away from nine years of commentary is heartbreaking regardless of what is waiting on the other side. I'll take some time to process this one. However, we don't retire. We just take breaks. Much love, Dan. Which is also true in esports. Retirements last like a week. I mean, fucking hell. Brady's. <laughs> Tom Brady's fucking rocking an esports retirement, isn't he? That poor cunt, by the way, who bought that fucking football. Oh, my God. Uh, completely unrelated. Half a million dollars for Tom Brady's fucking last fucking touchdown ball. And then he says, oh, I'm not retiring anyway. Psych, psych, psych. And now it's like just one of any other ball that he threw. Unreal. If, if I was that guy, I'd fucking, I'd sue the auction house or I'd sue Brady or I'd sue someone. I saw Brady because he's a nice dude was saying, can this guy get a Bitcoin or something from like a Bitcoin exchange? And it's like, he paid half a million. <laughs> Bitcoin's not half a million. <laughs> <laughs> One Bitcoin is fucking dropping the ocean for this poor motherfucker. You said you were out, Tom. You said you were out. I'm one of your biggest dick sucker fanboys. You said you were out. You can't do this to people. Anyway, whatever. Here's the other aspect to this. Dan and Sean have put so much work into that partnership. And, you know, as I waxed lyrical about when I was talking about Sean, what was DDK going to do? What, what was Dan going to do realistically once Sean was out? Go and learn again. Start at the beginning. Who would he get? Who would he partner up with? Would he be allowed to partner with someone? Would he find himself in the same position? What were the specifics around Dan not being hired? Dan says he's known for a while. He seems to have known longer than Sean. That means Riot Games were either never, were planning on not hiring either of them, or were never hiring Dan, and we're going to try and force Sean to commentate with other people. Why are they doing this? I don't know. They're widely regarded as the best duo in NA. Maybe bar one or two other names. The, some of the best overall in Valorant, which, by the way, has an abundance of talent. It's just ridiculous. It's just absolutely ridiculous. What they've done here is they forced two people into retiring from broadcasting who, first of all, could have gone on for years. Second of all, could have been the number one fucking duo in their game. Third of all, could have been one of the number one duos in any game of all time in esports history, up there with Tastosis or, you know, uh, uh, Kibler and Frodan, you know, like great, you know, Anders and Semlo, Sadakist and Henry G. These great partners, partnerships we've had down the years, missing out loads, I apologise. It's crazy. It really is crazy to me. Uh, yeah, Monty and Doe, I see. There's one I'm missing out. Dustin Vince. All the great, yeah, <laughs> dust types in the chat, dust and not getting hired, all the duos. So, you know, look, it's like it's unforgivable because these things have, like, huge ramifications. And let's also talk about, oh, he's about to say it, he's going to say it, the elephant in the room. Yes, the elephant in the room. What is the elephant in the room? This is a brutal message to send out to all the other Riot talent. To all the other Valorant talent, to all the talent, and you know, I didn't even get into it in the article about the stuff with Cadrill, about Shocks. They nearly didn't hire Shocks, one of the best in the business. Do you understand how little they give a fuck about the quality of their broadcast for you guys? Because they're willing to let the best talent fucking slide just to have control. This is a this is a scary message to send out to all the aspirational valorant casters which you know there's multiple people out there that are on the come up and they're really popular what if we get too popular do we get dropped do we have to accept not being hired what are we gonna do what comes next what can we complain about what conditions will we have to work under in the future what if they break our duo up do i have to accept it they have made a bold statement saying it's our way at all times and it doesn't matter who you are or how popular you are we will just cut you and you will be out forever and sean make no mistake about it they might cast other games they will never cast valorant again riot will not let them they might do it they could do it as a freelance thing if but riot could also just shut that down anytime they want and they've done shit like this in the past 
I remember when I was telling people about this, you know, they used to tell IEM, like, you know, you can't hire this person, you can't hire that person. Fuck with people's careers, even though they go to the company, hey, you can hire who you want for this talent event. And you go, right, cool, I'll run an event for your game. We'll all make some money. Yeah, no problem. And then they hear you hiring someone that they had an argument with at an after party five years ago. You can't hire that person, you can't hire that person. If you hire that person, we'll pull the whole game. They were all like that, by the way. All the riot staff, absolute deviants. And they all fucking come out after, you know, years later when there are other company some of them now want their second or third company after riot and they all go yeah there were some problems with the riot culture now looking back yeah you you fucker you loved it when you turned up to your events in your fucking little red t-shirts you loved it you loved bullying people and telling them they had to fucking listen to you you all did it you did it to me you did it to anyone so you don't get to say now sure i worked for satan but you know at the time, I couldn't really tell that he was the embodiment of all evil in, that rots and corrodes the human spirit. He did have a lovely, you know, red hue and nice horns. You know, you don't get to do that. You never get to do that. There's no world in which you get to do that, by the way. Besides maybe esports and sports. Shout out to fucking Deshaun going to the Browns. Fucking hell, Baker Mayfield must have pissed them off. Um, yeah, actually, I think we should go for this and give him one of the biggest ever NFL contracts. After all, it's only 22 civil suits. You know, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, they, sports and esports, and in particular esports, by the way, seems to be the only place you can just wash yourself of your sins. Like, 10 years of sins? Right, well, okay, I'll deal with a week of cancellation and change my name. It's ridiculous. Don't have opinions, though. Oh, yeah, and of course, politics. But saying politics is evil is, like, so redundant. I, I use that just as interchangeable phrases, honestly. I wrote that article. I hope that's given some additional context around it. And I'm going to write more opinion pieces about Valorant. I'm not going to let them off the fucking hook. They're, they're, they're going to make more bad decisions. They're going to fuck with talent. They're going to do crazy shit. I'll be there. Actually, you know, here's the thing. The Zoomers probably don't get this. I don't mind if you call me an asshole. It's fine. We shouldn't get along anyway. You're a fucking child. I don't care. <laughs> you'll let, you'll turn into me. Time will do that. And then I'll be dead or dying. And you'll go, fucking hell. Life really does wear you down, eh? And you'll see all these kids who are now, you know, got their virtual headsets on in the metaverse. Talking about things that just drive you insane. Listening to garbage music talking in broken sentences that have now deconstructed to letters and not even words anymore and you're gonna go fucking hell that generation sucks ass <laughs> and and you and you're gonna be right so i'm just telling you i don't mind you call me an asshole right sometimes you've got to be an asshole you have to be an asshole to stand up and say all that you have to be a confident asshole borderline narcissistic e delusional egotistical all of those things i try and keep myself in check with a bit of self-awareness i think i've got that much i don't think i've gone over the cliff but maybe maybe it, it, it won't invalidate the fact that yeah i'll stand up for people that are getting shafted by these big companies in esports always whoever you are whatever beef we've had doesn't matter i know i know a lot of people won't do the same for me i found that out but right is right and what happened to sean and dan was inarguably wrong.